in the present pandemic situation. So to discuss this very topic, uh, we have today two uh, eminent academicians, as well as scholars, as well as this person. Now, uh, I'm going to introduce our dignitaries. First of all, I uh, would like to introduce our principal, sir, uh, Dr. Dibbandu Satya, sir, our principal, uh, principal of Huang College. And he has been rendering service as principal since January 2012. So uh, thank you very much for, uh, sir, uh, seeing in line. Now I would like to introduce Professor David Cardung, sir, key speaker of this webinar. Uh, Professor David Cardung, ASOD of the Department of Life Sciences and Program Coordinator of uh, NSSL Dibrugur University. Uh, under his leadership as a uh, program coordinator of NSS Dibrugur University, the NSS unit of affiliating colleges under Dibrugur University is going on very smoothly and very nicely. So I welcome Professor uh, David Karang, sir. Now, I'm going to introduce uh, today's research person, Professor Rajiv Handik, sir. Professor Rajiv Handik, sir, is presently professor and head of the Department of History, Gohati University. Uh, professor Handik was a gold medalist in history from the University of Gohati. Dr. Handik sir started his teaching career from Manuhari Devi Kanoi Girls College, Dibrugar, Assam. Uh, prior to joining uh, in the Gohati University, he had served at Dibrugar University as an associate professor in the Department of History. And uh, for nine years, he served as an academic deputy registrar from 2000 to 2009. And at the same time, uh, he was the program coordinator of NSS Dibrugar University for five years. So we are happy to, uh, uh, with, happy with Professor Handik sir and uh, Professor David Carding sir uh, in this very occasion. So now uh, I request our principal sir to uh, deliver his speech as a inaugurator of this national webinar. Sir, please, principal sir. I request our principal sir to deliver his speech as a inaugurator of this webinar. Sir, hello, sir. Hello. Sir, sir can you unmute? Hello, am I audible? Yes, yes, sir, yes. Yes, sir. Good, good sir, afternoon, please. everyone. I consider it a great privilege to welcome you all to this national webinar on role of yacht in nation building process during and after COVID-19, organized by the NSS unit of Huang College. At very outset, I, on behalf of the institution, offer a warm welcome to the key speaker of the webinar, Professor David Cardone, Head, Department of Life Sciences and Program Coordinator, NSS Cell, Dibrugo University. 
and resource person, Professor Rajiv Handik, Department of History, Guwahati University. And at the same time, I'm really thankful to both of you for being present here in spite of your busy schedule. We all have witnessed that outbreak of COVID-19 has disrupted the functioning of all countries of the world. Our country is also not an exception. Sectors including health, education, business, sports, tourism, culture, economy, etc., are all affected severely. In this crucial juncture, the youth of our country has a significant role to play in the nation building process as the vision of our country lies in their hands. Youths are building blocks. Our nation and nation requires their participation and cooperation to achieve its desired goals. Hence, the theme of our webinar, role of youths in the nation building process during and after COVID-19 is very relevant in the present situation. I am quite optimistic that today's webinar will prove to be useful in overcoming the new challenges and define a new dimension in dealing with the situation at present and post COVID-19 era. On this occasion, I would like to appreciate Dr. Troliko Dehingia, the program officer of NSS unit of this college and coordinator of this webinar for his commendable initiations. Once again, I welcome and thank each and everyone involved in the webinar. I wish the success of the webinar and wish everyone well. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, sir, for your appreciating words and uh, wishes for success, success of this national webinar. Uh, once again, I would like to offer my thanks to our principal, sir. Now, I request uh, key speaker of this webinar, Professor David Gardung, sir, to deliver his speech. Uh, Gardung, sir, please. Cardinal, sir, please. On a neck, sorry. Sir, I am on a good deal. Sorry, on a neck. Cardinal, sir. Hello, Cardinal, sir. Yes, hello. Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, yes, sir. Are you? Okay, good oh. afternoon all. So, respected uh, principal sir, uh, my respected Dr. Rajiv Hendik sir, the professor of Guwahati University, previously my senior colleague in, uh, in the Department of History, Dibrugur University, and also the predecessor of my predecessor as program coordinator of NSSL Dibrugur University. And Dr. Dihinya, the program officer of Khuang College NSS unit, the participants of this webinar, and ladies and gentlemen, across the country, whoever is participating. At the very outset, I would like to thank Dr. Dehinya for giving me this opportunity to be part of this webinar. Though I am given the assignment, though I am given assi uh, I am 
assign to uh, deliver lecture as key speaker but i feel by virtue of being the program coordinator i am part and parcel of this seminar this webinar as the nss unit of twang college is organizing this i am also thankful to dehinya for inviting an eminent speaker for this webinar i am simply will act act as a key to open the door lock so that the speaker the invited speaker professor rajiv hindi will cover each and every corner inside the room the topic whichever has been chosen is very much pertinent one in the light of the ongoing pandemic situation where our students as well as all people are panic over the over their inability to complete their academic courses and also the day to day work of the life this lockdown due to pandemic have taught us some important aspects first of all the importance of outdoor activity how the outdoor activities are important for our life now we can realize that one second despite we are in the culmination of science development of science we are locked behind the door by minuscule even you can say the invisible virus we are locked behind the door locked inside the room so we have lost our normal life and also i have seen the earth the environment have repaired itself due to lockdown so art needed this also fort the people are really worried about what is the importance of life how much secured our life is and most importantly people are people around us are not that bad as we used to think earlier a group of people now working for our lives like doctors the health workers the police personnel they are they are delivering their services 
rendering their services without any self interest now come to the point the topic during uh, nation building process during covid 19 and after covid 19 we must we we might we must have already realized that some changes have already taken place in our life for example we are taking part in this webinar by sitting at our own places probably this practices before covid 19 was not there even it is though it was there but it was very rare in this in our localities in our cases we used to visit the places and we take two part in life uh seminar or meeting now from now onwards after covid 19 we have learned how to take part in this kind of online webinar process, webinars and this will probably a common practice in near future after covid 19 the another aspect of the topic of today's webinar is the rule of youth in nation building process it is already mentioned by our coordinator of this webinar dr dehinya about the uh, uh, importance of youth so i would like to share one screen wait dehinya i could not uh, uh, display my display my this thing is it visible hello sir Oh, is it visible? My uh, uh, slide? No, slide. Or slide for this? No, 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 not visible, sir. Okay, I'm I'm coming to that point. Uh, this. Okay, okay, sir. Here. Yeah. Oh, Pongo. Pongo. Oh, okay. Can we see the other one? See the other one. Yes, sir. Okay, it is visible. Okay. Thank you. Yes, sir. It is visible. Yeah, yeah. Coming to the point. So, uh, another uh, important point. to be uh, covered here is the rule of youth in nation building process so the nation building process itself is very uh, very important and meaningful uh, term meaningful words what actually nation building process defines this is the process whereby a society so society of people with diverse origin 
histories, languages, cultures, and religions come together within the boundaries of the sovereign state with a unified constitutional and legal dispensions. Dispensation, a national public education system, an integrated national economy, shared symbols and values as equals to work together for eradicating the divisions and injustice of the past to foster unity and promote a countrywide conscious sense of being proudly India, Indian, committed to the country and open to the continued and the world. So this is the definition which speaks itself. The meaning of nation building process. The nation building versus nation branding. Nation building is a multidimensional concept. It involves the active participation of its citizens in various work of their life. A strong and powerful nation is built with dedication and hard work of its citizen. And some amount of smart planning on the part of the government. So we'll discuss this towards later part of this presentation. Most important facet of nation building process is the tapping the potential of its human resources, reducing the social and economic disparity that exists in the society and creating an environment wherein individuals can live freely and attain their best in life. Now, everything is clear about the definition of nation building process. Who will be the participant in the nation building process? What is the objective of this nation building process? And for whom this nation building process are required? When nation building a government of a nation, policy maker of a nation, sought that the planning towards nation building process is required to be expedited. Some new elements are added, added to the policy, which is called nation branding. Nation building process, if extended with new element in the process, in the policy, then that extended element along with the nation, the rest of the nation building process is called nation branding. So this is some, uh, a little bit newer uh, approach and terminology. A country may adopt this policy also, some new element in addition to existing policy. How strong is the youth force? Because nation building, as you uh, know, as most of you know, that our country, our country is considered as the youngest country in the world. From age group zero to 35, we have 64% of the total population. If we consider the uh, youth 
who can work who can take part in this nation building process they constitute about 28% the age group ranging from 15 to 29 years but our youth policy of india under ministry of youth affairs and sports government of india the working age group has been considered from 13 to 30 one three 13 to 30 years and this constitute about more than 30 percent of the total demographic dividend of the country so this youth as already mentioned by Dr. Dehinia, they are the most important group of the population who can act as the mover of the country, mover who can move the country forward with desired progress in economy, with desired progress in political stability with desired progress in social cohesion. So they can, they can, they, this is the age who can learn everything very easily, who can convert a challenge, a, a, a challenge to an opportunity. Therefore, the youth are considered as the one of the most important force, most important asset of a country. One more important point is that if this youth, we have already seen few uh, uh, a month back the unorganized youth who have come, uh, unorganized laborers who have come from different states to own places how chaos chaotic situation they created is very important to know to understand as uh, because this youth, if they are not organized, if they are not uh, channelized in proper way, they will create problem for the nation in near future. Then next point is the active participation of youth in pro uh, proportional to the nation's development. If active participation, it is not possible that 100% uh, uh, youth can actively participate in nation building process. But the number, as the number increases, the proportion of nation building process, or the proportion of the national development will also increase. Therefore, it is the active participation of youth in nation building process is directly proportional to the nation's development. What are different pillars? You can help in the help in the prosperity of the nation. The first is the economic progress. If we change our position, the cohesion, social cohesion is the important issue. If the society is having strong cultural background, strong cultural relationship, strong historical background, then strong political stability, then definitely the economy of that society will also strong. Therefore, these three pillars, economic progress, political stability, and social cohesion have been put in a cyclic way, cyclic 
uh, pattern. Let us see the uh, certain aspect of our society, our, our country. If society is progressing, our state is progressing. If our state is progressing, our nation is progressing. That's why let us start with our society, considering our society and the uh, problems associated in our society. Our strength, as I already mentioned, that demographic structure, our country, there are some countries which are considered as old countries. If we consider, uh, if we compare our country, our India, with the date of the Chinese demographic structure, few decades back, the China adopted the one child policy. Now that one child policy has been withdrawn because they have realized that one child policy, they, uh, what was the intention for introducing one child policy, they have achieved, they have stabilized the population. Now the child, once the single child have now grown too old, the time will come all of them will become old. So their youthfulness, youth category will be lower in the total population. Our demographic structure are very favorable one. That is our strength. Our youth proportions are very large with which the nation can go ahead with uh, proper planning. We have seen, we have very large number of low wages laborers. If these low wages labor, laborers are employable or employed with proper support by the nation's economic development, then our nation can prosper and that low wage laborer can be proved to be one of the strength for our country in near future. Then natural resources. Our country is very rich in resources, natural resources. If we consider our state itself at the state level, our state is very, very rich in natural resources. So that is one very important strength because our youth can make use of these natural resources for contribution to the progress of the state as well as, as the nation. The challenges, if our challenges, if we ask a youth, what is your problem? It is definitely the answer will be unemployment problem today in our country. It is not in our country only. It is everywhere in the world. But unemployment is the main issue in our country. So what is the what is the reason? One basic and important reason is that our planning, our policy does not support the development of the economy, which in, which in turn cannot accommodate the proper opportunity to the employable youth. That is one very important point. And our policy and our um, uh, planning all are 
not supportive at this moment for the favor of the uh, growth unorganized labor sector if um, had not this uh, pandemic situation occur probably we did not we not uh, we would not be able to know the number of unorganized labor number of people in uh, engaged as unorganized labor across the country so this unorganized labor be organized that we can make it to an opportunity for us our strength economic inequality in the society not only economy but even the societal inequality let us see the economic inequality one study uh, across the world informed that only 1% of the total global population 1% of the total global population have the share of 22% of the total gdp total global gdp this is very important 1% of the global population is the owner of 22% of the total global gdp and 10% of the total global population is the owner of 56% of the total global gdp so this result this study result indicate how the economy of the world is distributed among the population and the rich people going richer and richer and poor people becoming poorer and poorer these are the policies our opportunities as the pandemic pandemic situation brought into the changing world order there will be new relationship cooperations among the nations and needs needs will be fresh new we have to get ready for those opportunities new changes to be grabbed and huge market of the country why other people other nation looks at india many studies many critics says the huge market of the country is the main attraction of india our threats internal as well as external security threats we are having hostile neighbors around us in indian subcontinent which is which are actually act as hindrance of the progress of the nation excessive socio political divergence so excessive socio political divergence are some force some elements which sometimes affects adversely on the progress of the nation sometimes 
not always. Of course, uh, you may be not uh, agree with me, particularly I shall request our uh, um, uh, invited speaker, Professor Rajiv Hendik to uh, elaborate this point as well. So what is the objective of the national youth policy? For involving the youth for national, nation building process, the Ministry of Youth Affairs and Sports Coast of India formulated a policy for the period between 19, uh, 2014 to 19. The new policy was supposed to come, but uh, due to this uh, COVID-19 uh, pandemic situation, that it could not uh, uh, reach and uh, probably could not uh, bring out. To empower the objective, main objective is to empower the youth of the country to achieve their full potential and throw them enable India to find its rightful places, place in the community of nations. There are five major objectives. Major trust. One is the create to create a productive workforce. The workforce, the youth, is large in number, but it is meaningless, or it will become worthless. It cannot be assessed until and unless they become educated, skilled workforce. They have to be educated. They have to be skilled. Then only there they become a productive workforce. Then second point is to develop a strong and healthy generation. Strong and healthy generation is very much important for youth. Therefore, the ministry have emphasized on the on this issue, sports and other youth programs, culture, all these are taken into consideration in, under this uh, is, uh, under this head. Then instill social values and promote community services. How the youth can be involved in the process of social upliftment? How they can understand the problems going around in the society? How with uh, understanding of this social problem, they can progress. They can try to solve the issue, solve the problem. This is another uh, objective that youth should engage with. The facilitate, to facilitate and part, facilitate the participation and civic engagement is the fifth or fourth, fourth uh, objective. Then fifth one is to support youth at risk and create equitable opportunity for all. So all these objectives, under all these objectives, the NSS, particularly the NSS activities have been formulated and the NSS volunteers are taking part in different times. How NSS volunteer can be involved in social transformation? So our NSS volunteers have one specific program that is the special camping program which uh, undertake a seven day 
bile si stay stay program they 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 go to their adopted village and take part in the in various activities going in the village and that helps in the strengthening of social institution actually what happens in nss programs our volunteers are exposed to various issues of the village as per uh, as per wish of our father of nation mahatma gandhi mahatma gandhi always wanted that our youth our each and every student should be given an opportunity to take part in the uh, rural activities and with this principle with this objective our nss programs are framed and leadership the nss volunteers are given opportunity to express itself so itself its own potency own potentiality in the in various programs so leadership is very important for social transformation for a leader leader we we must remember certain quality that is communication skill nowadays information tech information and technology information technology and social media play a very crucial role and this youth can use this information technology for uh involve involvement in the social transformation our uh, nss volunteer in last in this uh, ongoing covid 19 pandemic time they are involved in participation of the various webinar they are uh, participating in awareness program through information technology so this is a very good thing that we have learned how to live with this situation situation with new normal sit, uh, new normal uh, condition frequent contact with people the leader has to frequently contact with our people so that they will be guided for a proper direction otherwise they will be uh deviated from the social proper social context enlightening government schemes what our nss volunteer can do our nss volunteer can take part in awareness of the government schemes if you go to village that if you ask any rural people what are the schemes what are the policies the government have been framed for the poor people they will not be able to answer even our literate educated youth also are not aware about the government schemes this is one very important point our nss volunteer should take initiative for and create environment for entrepreneurship development friends we must remember that this covid has demolished the entire economy of the world we will st we will start our life fresh therefore don't wait for any government job you will start entrepreneurship it is not such that the government job will not be there but don't wait for that and we will have new opportunity i hope our uh, youth particularly nss volunteer will be able to find some way how to live in this uh, unusual situation skilling the workforce of course 
we never thought about how this digit, digital india awareness will uh, help us in future of course it was there but now we realize that digitalization which was uh, taken up in 2015 i think or 2015 uh, yeah 2015 we um, um, organized program for awareness of the digital, digital india also and how this has become useful today under this abnormal situation of the covid pandemic okay uh, friends being volunteer nss volunteer and youth we should be proud to be patriot we should be we should have the sense of ownness to the country if you study as if you are studying it for the country if you are true patriot then your study will not go in vain if you a researcher you if you research for the defense of the country you will be definitely successful in your objective think in patriotic way you will be successful in one day okay let us i want to share uh, some uh, activities we have taken during last few years uh, we the nssl dibrugarh university have 12500 volunteers now and uh, it is not such that all 12, 12500 volunteer are engaged equally in nss activities some are uh, very active some are uh, very inactive and some are uh, in between them there are some issues some um, problems some um, reasons behind this uh, uh, disparities then the regular act under regular activities we do do some novel work under the head of blood donation camps nowadays we have change the things a little bit whenever in a locality blood is required our volunteer go and donate it so blood donation camps donation of blood is very uh, noble work as you know it saves life so everyone should go for it in his lifetime because sometimes you may also require blood from other disaster mitigation i am very happy to share with you that in 2017 44 nss units have distributed and involved in mitigation and uh, relief distribution activity during the devastating flood that took place in lokhimpur district of assam and other uh, other uh, activity our other uh, uh, example is like uh, some active uh, nss volunteers are involved in uh, recently uh, devastated uh, tinsukia fire that uh, caught fire in um uh, oil well and uh, that is that also uh, uh, the mess and news was spread throughout the country and abroad swachhata program now we, we realize how swachhata or cleanliness is uh, important for our life our volunteers are involved in the cleaning of their own campus of their houses as well as the public places across the state across the uh, their own localities awareness program on yoga in digital india already mentioned yoga is very important to uh, contain the 
if you say the uh, various diseases including the covid 19 if you want to increase your immune system you have to do yoga awareness and mitigation of covid 19 yes this is very important that uh, our um, uh, uh, nss program officers and volunteers under dibrugo university they have done commendable job commendable work on these issues while people locked down under the, their, the, in their room, in their houses, then our program officers and volunteers, they throw online. They have started working for mitigation of COVID-19. And for your kind information, many program officers and volunteers prepared face masks and distributed among the poor people as well as their adopted villages. One program officer, I must take his name, that is Dr. Amorjit Soikia from Margarita College. He himself prepared about 2,200 face masks at his own home by, his, by himself and distributed those uh, in the surrounding people. And he conducted one program that is uh, mass is must. And that program in collaboration with this district administration was very much successful one. And uh, uh, all appreciations has come from all corner of the state. And many other uh, program officers from Majuli, from uh, Dibrugor, from Tinsukia, and uh, other um, districts in, uh, involved in the mitigation of awareness and in mitigation of COVID-19, particularly preparation of video for awareness of awareness against how to uh, um, wash their hands, how to wear face masks and also how to maintain social distance. Directly the, our students involved, even in uh, management of the quarantine center also. So some success stories in the state, I'd like to share it with our volunteers and youth. These are some photography of homepage. Our local, products. I already mentioned that we are very much resourceful. Our state is very much rich in natural resources. Using these resources, a lot of youth have come forward through entrepreneurship development and they are getting success. You might have heard about crafting. These are bamboo products now growing up to multinational level and we must our youth must think about it because if the if india is planning for lookist policy is already uh, advanced with lookist policy our assam will be the gateway for that, we have to prepare, keep prepares ourselves so that we can grab the opportunity, whichever will come to come through this lookist policy. Another, the trade name is Kharkwa. Kharkwa is very popular as the it is involved in food products. Our ethnic food are glorified and marketed by this group. And he is also is a very successful uh, entrepreneur now. And then Tholgiri. Tholgiri is an entrepreneur where multiple things 
have been covered multiple uh, right from uh, medicinal plant including agricultural product the local uh, books by local writers then dresses ethnic dresses traditional costumes all these are marketed by this tholgiri uh, group and uh, we are we should be proud and we should follow this kind of entrepreneur people because they along with their own uh, earnings they are uh, providing um, employment to some other people also so this is the true spirit of nation building process so our nss program officers and volunteers have conducted many awareness program like place for life and this program with this program our dibrugarh university nss have done a, a achieve commendable uh, work and uh, it is at national level we have uh, brought a certificate to spread awareness against the tobacco consumption among the school children so this is how our um, volunteers are involved in plantation programs during nss special camping program how our volunteers are involved in educational institution of the village they are enjoying and how girls these are the spirit of the nation building process how girls nss volunteers they are involved in the construction of road this is really amazing some of the helping hands of nation nss volunteers the um, uh, flood relief distribution some clips of the flood relief distribution which uh, um, uh, undertaken in 1970 so we also uh, handed over some help uh, uh, some cash some money to the cancer patient this small baby is a cancer patient and uh, uh, lower uh, panel lower photograph the elder sister of the cancer patient who could not attend is receiving the check of 40000 each which was collected by nss volunteers across the uh, um, across the university uh, affiliate affiliated area across the um, general students in the colleges so fight against covid 19 this is the person who uh, received lot of appreciation across the country and the, uh, across the state and the country this is he is uh, omorjit soikya dr omorjit soikya so lastly i would like to conclude my speech maintain social responsibility i simply a slight deviation from social distance i emphasize on social responsibility because social distancing or physical distancing whatever may it be it is under social responsibility if the person is responsible then only the distancing will become meaningful the wear uh, wear face mask effectively and stay safe is today's mantra dear friends i uh, with this few words i would like to conclude my speech and uh, i thank all the uh, participants for their uh, patience listening though the uh, uh, presentation uh, had to uh, complete in a hurry because uh, our speaker is waiting so i i'm actually waiting for to listen to him only i am not a good speaker i am actually waiting to, for him that uh, he will talk and i will listen so thank you thank you is there any query is there any query uh, yes sir uh, 
Thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, the part, I request participants to ask question in short chat, chat box. Hello, sir. Pardon, yes. sir. Yes. Uh, if there is no question, much. no, no. Question or oh, my question can ask in chat box, sir. After ending end of the yeah. uh, deliberation of Rajit Hendrik, sir. Okay, okay, okay. That is good. Okay. Good. Uh, okay. Uh, thank you very much, sir. Uh, hmm. Thank you very much. Uh, actually. Uh, Professor Cardin, sorry, really man of action. He is from the background of science, uh, life sciences in particular, but uh, has delivering his, his piece as a man of social science. Really very nice deliberation and informative also. So I would like to thank uh, David Cardin, sir. Okay. So thank, you. thank you very much, sir. Uh, now, um, there is an important announcement for participants. Uh, our feedback form will be shared in Zoom chat box only, and who are uh, who are in the live YouTube live uh, YouTube live here can get the feedback form in YouTube live chat box because uh, we find 685 registered participant, but now uh, in Zoom app, only 290 participants are in Zoom app and more than 60 participants in uh, YouTube live. So uh, feedback we uh, don't share in our WhatsApp group. So feedback form will get in Zoom chat box and YouTube live chat box. Uh, now I, uh, before, uh, before going to uh, Hondigo search presentation. Uh, another thing I uh, like to announce here, a participant, uh, especially for participants, participant can ask question in chat box. And after uh, finishing of the del uh, finishing of deliberation of Rajiv and search, participant can ask question directly also. Now I request Professor Rajiv Hondik sir to deliver his lecture. Hondik sir, please. Okay. Uh, good afternoon. Am I audible? Yes, sir, audible. Okay. Okay. Uh, I must confess one thing before I proceed that uh, the situation uh, regarding internet is not very very encouraging in my form because I'm not using the broadband connectivity that I have because it is not functioning today. Uh, we had a very strong wind and rain our one hour back. And so uh, this is the problem. Uh, in between, there may be uh, uh, some problem with internet. So for that, I may please be excused. So... Uh, uh, Dr. Dibbanando Setia, the principal of uh, Kuang College, uh, who was also the inaugurator of today's uh, national webinar. Uh, Dr. David Cardon, uh, head of the Department of uh, Life Sciences, Diburo University, who is also the program coordinator of the NSS cell, uh, and who is the key speaker, and I, and I must congratulate for his very elaborate uh, address. And uh, I learned quite a lot, and I in fact, uh, I'm very happy to know that so much of things are happening uh, in NSS front there. Dr. Tolitko Dehingya, uh, the program officer, who is the associate professor as well of sociology at Kwan College, and who has been very, very active actually since uh, I was a, also a, a program uh, coordinator of the Buddha University for around five years. Uh, I must confess that uh, during that time, there were not funds which were flowing in for various reasons. And there colleges who were keeping their NSS cells uh, very active through activities. And I still remember Toluto uh, Dehingya organizing one yoga camp. And today we know yoga is, you know, you have a national yoga day which we had a few days back. And he is a person who started, you know, just uh, quite long before uh, this uh, sort of movement started. Anyway, uh, it's very glad to, you know, 
the dean was to get an invitation from uh, Dr. Dehingya once again. Uh, esteemed teachers of uh, Kwan College and also other teachers who are uh, present over various uh, internet platforms, uh, students, volunteers, program officers, ladies and gentlemen who are actually listening to me uh, at the moment at uh, this time. Uh, I, I congratulate uh, at the very beginning Kwan College for organizing this webinar. Uh, we have been having webinars on various topics, but this is one topic which I think uh, needs to be uh, taken up uh, in more webinars. In fact, this may, this may be the beginning because youths are uh, our future. Youths are the most, uh, you may say, changers of the society. And so it's very, very important. I really congratulate uh, the college for taking this initiative. And I thank uh, them for uh, inviting me to this webinar. So uh, as I have already mentioned, uh, Dr. Cardom, uh, I'm really amazed by the range of uh, topics he raised. And I'm really thankful because he has made my job much easier, actually, <laughs> to take it forward. And he, uh, though he was supposed to be the key speaker, he's actually a resource person by his own right. And uh, the role of youth in national building process uh, during and after COVID-19, it is in fact a, I should say, huge topic. It's a huge topic, a very big topic actually. And maybe in the process, I will raise more questions than I will uh, answer. And uh, in fact, uh, there are many issues which uh, Dr. Cardon has already covered and maybe I will just uh, reiterate a few of them. Uh, and in fact, the uh, role of youth is, uh, is very important. But then who is a youth? Whom do you consider, consider as a youth? What are the characteristics of youth? Uh, what's the difference between, between youth and youthfulness? <laughs> I'm more than 50 now, but I consider myself to be uh, quite uh, youthful. Tolito uh, Dhingya or Amarjit Soikya or Rajiv Rudrataryang or you know the other very active uh, uh, program officers of the different NSS uh, units of Tokyo uh, University they are in fact I consider them to be you know uh, very youthful and very uh, youth like so anyway uh, I mean to say we should all consider ourselves to be youth and uh, maybe to uh, and for this country, for the entire world. Because problems today in the world, they are no longer, you know, regional problems or, you know, national problems. They are largely global problems. And it is a global problem. COVID-19 is a global problem. And about the role of youth, why youths only? Why do you always say, you know, the youth have to role of What about the role of the others? What about the role of us? What about the, you know, I think that's important. Uh, but then, another question is also, is there any special role for the youth? That is also true. There is a special role of the youth, and that's why we raise this question. And youths, therefore, should understand uh, their importance, their own importance. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Your voice is not audible now. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Your voice is not audible now. Uh, this is because of network problem, I think. Hello, sir. I don't know. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Yes, yes, it is network issue. Hello, sir.
Halo, Sir. Halo, Sir. Halo, Sir. Not audible. All not audible. Halo, Sir. Halo. 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 Halo, Sir. Hello sir, your voice is not audible. Hello sir. Actually, hello, sir. Yes, hello. Sir. yes, yes. Now audible. I am sorry. Actually, what is it? Is because of the network. Uh, yes, this network is very. Uh, yeah, yeah. Network is. Uh, I have told you, but once I get reconnected, you will again have to unmute me. <laughs> that, is, oh. that is why you are not listening <laughs> because oh, yeah. each time I go out. Uh, maybe you will again have to unmute me. Okay, now it is unmuted. Now it is unmuted. Okay, okay. Sir. Now it is unmuted. So actually, I'll try. I'll I'll try to I try, try to you know be as brief and as uh, as you know as as brief as possible. Actually, now uh, I was I was just talking about uh, the role of the youth and you know the problematics of the entire topic, the nation building process, for example. Uh, again, what is a nation? What is the nation we are talking about? And yeah. is India a nation or a it is a nation in the making? In fact, a few days back we had a very, very you know, very uh, intense discussion amongst my own students about this nation in the making process. We are trying to become a nation. So, uh, so this, these are some issues which are there, which I think we need to again uh, think about and. Uh, important issue but the topic therefore is very very potent and very important and then the you know uh, covid 19 situation uh, cardong has already told uh, about you know the different activities which NS, NS volunteers are doing youths in the country they have been doing in fact quite a lot they are volunteering they are they are walking back home they are creating i think we all remember Juti kumari who was just you know about 15 or 16 years who carried our father cycling all the way from Gurugram to Bihar, 12, 1,200 kilometers. She is a youth, she is, a, she is in a way, she is an icon, actually. She is an youth icon. So this is what our youth capable of. This is what they're capable of. Uh, and finally, actually, the real problem lies, uh, you know, the stand which I, as a speaker, needs to take. Because I, 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 was a program, I was a program link unavailable to this coordinator Omar of uh, the of the Buddha University, uh, and I'm involved here also a bit. But then, uh, should I talk as a as a as a part of the big NSA NSS uh, scheme? NSS, you know, we have a fraternity in fact. We NSS volunteers and NSS officers and coordinators, we, we have a very uh, good rapport. And do I talk like that? 
or do I talk as an academician or as an historian? Uh, because uh, today, history is being talked talk in very great details, especially with regard to pandemics. Uh, but then I will, I, I think I will speak as an amalgam of all of them. And most important, uh, importantly, I will talk as a citizen of uh, India. Uh, now, the role of youth, uh, really, Dr. Cardin has said quite a lot, uh, is indeed very important. Primarily, primarily because of two reasons. I, I uh, cite two reasons. Uh, number one is uh, the demographic uh, situation. We, as youngest country, we tend to call uh, as youngest country. And uh, we are, because it's already, we have more than 60%, 64% of our population. They belong to this uh, age group, uh, which uh, is considered to be young. So we are the youngest country in the world. And that is why, but at the same time, I also would like to emphasize that we must not forget that this youngest time he is going to become an oldest one because we will all we will all age. These sixty percent population will age. Now, if they age, what will be the country in, in which they will be aging? What will be the uh, demographic profile then? And what will be the situation? Uh, Socio-economic development pattern or the political economy? What will it be like? So when when uh, when we talk of uh, you know youth demographics, when we talk of this youngistan, it is India. I think we need to also think more importantly about the future as well. And the second reason why youth is indeed very important is because of their very age itself. This is an age where they dream. It is said that the youths are dreamers. It, it reminds me of uh, the John Lennon song, Imagine, a beautiful song, where he said that we are dreamers. Dreaming is so important. And it's a youth, I think, amongst all the, all the you know, population profile that you will find, it is the youth who dream. And they should dream, because it is their age to dream. And dream of a, a good future, of a good life, of a good society. And yeah, for the society, for the country, and for the, so and, and for the civilization as a whole. Because we always say that, uh, the future belongs to the youth. Now, if the future belongs to the youth, then uh, we need to understand that it is the youth who will be making the future. Uh, however, the circumstances must also be favorable for them to work, to realize their dreams. And that is where the problem of the context in which the youth works the context in which the youth would, would perform becomes so important. So anyway, uh, it is true that uh, you know China is second to us, or that Indonesia is third, and then uh, you have uh, USA, then Pakistan, Nigeria, Brazil, all following us. Bangladesh is also having a youth population, very very substantial youth population. So I don't say. Uh, to read too much into it, because what is happening is, is, if you look at the different leaders, they tend to always magnify. They tend to always magnify that we are the youths, you know, the most youthful country. I think that is that is true. That is true. It's not that it is totally false, but then we should also also remember that there are also other countries 
where there is substantial youth population. So it is not that you know uh, all the countries are aging and we are young and all the jobs will go to us and uh, we will be able to reap the uh, dividends. So we have to be careful about that. And uh, quantity doesn't matter alone. Quantity matters. What are we doing with this huge demographic dividend? What are we giving to the youth? These are also questions which needs to be asked. So, uh, as a matter of fact, there are no doubt, there are no doubt opportunities and uh, Dr. Cardon has said about that. It is true that the West, Japan, and even to some extent, China, they are easy. They are easy in their population profile. Their population, they, they are more, slowly they will be having more old persons. Uh, and India is economically developing. We have a long way to go. So there are opportunities for us as well. Today, when the Prime Minister talks of the other, he also uh, is trying to point to the huge opportunities that there are. We have been uh, mostly a consuming nation. We have mostly been an importing nation. And also we must not forget that those countries, the West or Japan or even China, where we think our workforce will go and earn, they are, uh, they are also automating. There is a lot of automation going on. There, there is artificial intelligence which is coming in. So maybe the youngest time, the population of Afghanistan may not be required by them. So I think we should better uh, try to think what we can do in our own country. Because this is a this is a fact that you know more than 50% of our IIT graduates they end up in Western countries, in Western Seoul. They have used up the resources of the country. There are many many you know youths who have actually led this country that is also a fact so let us not be uh, too uh, too you know our focus should not be what we can do how our our population our young population can find jobs in the in those countries where they are easy our focus should be on how we can use our own resources to build the and strong Bharat Varsha. That is important. Not, you know, looking for greener pressures as elsewhere. Because that is something which is being, you know, times and time and time again you hear about, you know, this huge possibility which is coming before us. But that is, I mean, we shouldn't be, you know, daydreaming. We should dream. Anyway, there are challenges. Lots of it before the and these these challenges cannot be addressed by the youths on their own themselves it's not it's not possible actually because for example quality education and skill this is a problem the youths cannot do anything about it today we are talking of skilling india youths will participate in that but who will be the giver? They will, they will be the takers. Maybe some of them will be the givers of this skilling. But it's again a pops down approach. It is again through the same regimented bureaucratic system. As a result of which, maybe there will be skill which will not be necessary. And maybe there will be skills which will be more than the measure which is required. So these are issues. Quality education is something without which our youth will not be able to perform. And we really need to think about it. We have the new, new education policy, but again, I have, I, have, I have gone through that. There are a lot of issues. I'm not bringing it to issue, but it seems overall that we have not been able to come out of the colonial legacy. 
We have not been able to think on our own. We have not been able to think out of the box. That is our problem. That is our problem. We have all the, all the time uh, copying. We have been copying the West and trying to uh, copy paste, as we have done with the CBCS, as we have done with the semester system. I have been a uh, in during the introduction. You must have heard. I was uh, part of the academic administration of Dibuga University. We did. Uh, experiment, not experiment, I should say. We took all, all the teachers, all the colleges on board and tried to reform to a certain extent the undergraduate education. And we were actually doing with a process of annual system with some amount of continuous assessment. And today, I think even that was a good experiment. But then uh, there is an idea that semester is always better. Because Western universities, they follow the semester system, and that is just copy pasted, brought it, and put it in, applied it in India. One size fits all. One size fits all. Then came the CBCS. I don't know how many understand what the CBCS is. CBCS is, it's, it's, a, it's a, I should say, a hilarious matter. You cannot do things like that. CBCS doesn't run like that. CBCS, this is not the CBCS. Anyway. Let us let us not. I, I will not digress too much. But what I am saying is, having a proper education system, wherein the skill component will have to be made a part of, it. we are not going to progress. But at the same time, I am not saying that we are not doing anything. Our country is doing certain things. Anything maybe that will give us some window of opportunity, but. The tops down approach again, I think, will stand on the way. Secondly, we all, during this pandemic situation, we are all, you know, uh, from top to bottom, we all understand the lacuna of our health system. A country as poor as ours, we hardly spend 1% of our GDP on health. And we are, we are trying to cope up this COVID situation with that. And it's really, it, it is, you know, the, the Almighty is very graceful, is, you know, in limiting the number of infections. And we have our resistance because we are a poor country. We have, we are, we have tough, you can say, we are exposed to so much of virus in any case. Maybe we are tougher than the Americans who's, you know, mortality rates have crossed the lack. My point is, access to health facility is another very important thing. Very important. Because health also means wellness, it also means nutrition, and it also, it doesn't only mean physical, it also means mental health. And without that, the youth will suffer. And youths are suffering. We have you see, you know, uh, you see the Olympics, you see the other games. It is a, it is a situation. We are, of course, doing much better than before, especially in the neoliberal era. We are doing much, uh, you know, better because it's also because of the corporate funding and the other things that this talent spotting that is going on that this is happening. But we don't have a physical infrastructure for physical and mental growth over you. So these are issues I'm flagging off because uh, I think when we talk about the role of youth in nation building, these are also things that has to be taken care of. We're talking that the youth have to do this and do that, merely will not do. Then there are a lot of regional and social disparities. This we all know. There are a lot of unemployment. You know, the, the Patita uh, Andolan that, that is there, the Jab Andolan that is there, and uh, in, the, in, in, uh, the, in Maharashtra, the Marathi Manus Andolan, all these Andolans are for what? You may say this is for identity. It is true. It is also for identity, but then it is also for jobs. It is also because of the huge unemployment situation, which is you know, scourging all these people, all these communities, that there is a, there is, you know, uh, the growth of these movements for reservation in jobs. So unemployment is a situation 
of course, but we today talk of uh, creating more uh, job givers than job seekers. It is also true. We should, and again, that, that again takes us back to the education system. Anyway, then uh, the digital, uh, you know, India is giving us great opportunities. Uh, for example, today we are uh, talking uh, over the internet. This is a huge thing that has happened since the neoliberal era started. Today we are into the, uh, you know, generation four. Then there will be generation five, which will be coming. Telecommunication has increased quite a lot. But at the same time, we have to remember that this digitization, this rapid digitization has also fueled some different character. Wherever you see, there are also uh, advertisements for new and newer products. Hype is, I think, a type of uh, fallout of this digitization. You know, youths have been mesmerized by the type of, the varieties of commodities which are available. And we are in a situation as if uh, you get a, the identity, identity of India are in a way, uh, uh, in a way, I should say, counted or valued against commodities he or she possesses. So anyway, so this hyper consumerism is something uh, that is, I think, also affecting our youths very material. Ambitions are there, and there is a lot of short termism, short term to success, short term to success, short term to, uh, to you know, uh, be where they want to be without having, you know, losing totally the sight of the larger picture. So, this, and this has led to criminalization to a large extent. We have seen this, uh, you know, the, the encounter because we were in all these issues. But then it, it's also true that criminalization and violent behavior, they are, we are being exposed to a lot of this. And the youths are also exposed to a lot of this. These are important. Violence, normalization of violence, it has actually numbed. It has numbed the children who are becoming youths. And this is really not a good future. This is not, this doesn't bode well for the future. If you have, you know, citizens who are quite averse to violence, then this is not a good story at all. And this violence is also normalized and perpetrated by both state and non state actors. We see encounter killings, we see, and, and these are all actually. Uh, our mass media, who also acts very, uh, in a way, very irresponsibly sometimes, they have created a lot of problems. So we must, when we try to locate the youth of our country, we have to locate our youth in this scenario, in this scenario of mass media, in this scenario of rampant hyper-consumerism of the materialistic impulses, which drives their, you know, uh, their blood, so to say. So these are important issues and these issues and issues, important issues, issues which concerns our youth, our country are often submerged by this mass media with newer and newer issues. So it goes on, the show just goes on. So I think for the youth of our country, maintaining equilibrium is very, very important. They are, we are also traditional, but at the same time, we are becoming ultra modern. We are trying to become ultra modern. So, what is happening is that it says we are a sort of Trishanku nation. That story of Trishanku, who got actually, uh, in a way, you know, between heaven and earth, we are like that, being torn. I feel really bad for the youths, the type of stress they are into, the type of pressures they work on, work with, 
the type of future that they see for themselves. So I think as a whole, uh, not only you know the youth, but the government, the education system as a whole, we, I mean to say the entire city have to take the youth along. And that is where I see the role of youth. The role of youth has to be located with canvas. We cannot isolate them. They cannot work in an island. They do not work in an island. They are part of a whole. And that is important. And I think one of the most important issues is also the lack of icons. Whom do they look up to? Just see the type of leaders that you have today. You cannot look at the mama, you cannot look at the bhagin, you know. It is a situation which have actually, I think, uh, created a huge problem. But I'm glad that NS, NSS as a whole has done quite a lot as, as the agent of change. NSS uh, has been working and Dr. Cardon has uh, highlighted quite a few of that. And they are actually encouraged because I do uh, from time to time I participate in these uh, programs for program uh, NSS program officers where we, where we try to highlight uh, the role of the youths, the role of the youths who are within this national service scheme. And we encourage them. We encourage them to work for the promotion of gender equity, we uh, also try to encourage them to work for social justice and fairness. We encourage them to fight to understand the socialization process which they are coming and to see how commodification is changing the who you know of uh, different aspects of our lives. In the NSS, we also work for eradicating social evils like witch hunting, dowry, or child marriage. We do it by creating awareness. These are long-term goals of NSS. NSS has to be. And uh, these are long-term goals, and, and I think uh, this will continue. Uh, the need is also for democratization. More and more democratization is necessary. It's not only democracy. More democracy is necessary. We have to understand democracy. Youths have to uh, you, the way forward for the youth should be more and more democratization, not more and more participation in electoral politics, which we sometimes think to be the be all and and all of democracy. That is not it. Electoral democracy is a just a part of the democracy. And you know, this seems like NSF in autonomy of the media is also important. And we have also to sustain proper civil play role as members of various groups. Youths have to develop and promote the gulf of difference which is created between communities and communities, between people and people. They are all based on identity and identities are nothing but social constructs. It is a human beings. We have actually made religion, we have made caste, we have made language. 
in India, which is a country with so much of diversity, so much of uh, language, so much of uh, you know tribes. It's it's a, we are actually blessed to be part of this country, and there is no way out to chart a good future for this country. Role, adequate role, proper role in the nation building process. The only role is, you know, supporting pluralism and celebrating diversity. We have to learn our volunteers, our youths will respect the difference. Firstly, it's a very simple actually. It's very simple. If different. The point number one is you recognize the difference. Okay, we are different. The second point is fact and difference. So that is that is, you know taking the relationship with this difference. So this is you know these are the type of skills that we need for uh, making a truly a truly uh, India of our dreams. We have to know not ritualism, spiritualism. Spiritualism of who is actually in many ways related to Nessus. These are but broad principles, but we need gurus. And fortunately for Nessus and for a lot of us actually we have I told uh, Swami Vivekananda, another very instrumental in the entire NSS program is Mahatma Gandhi. In fact, the NSS National Service Scheme was started on the birthday of Mahatma Gandhi and on his, so to say, centenary. So it's a dedication to Mahatma Gandhi. And if you look at the entire, you know, the debate, the entire engagement of uh, of our youth uh, with the different issues of life, we find Mahatma Gandhi not featuring in the way he should have featured. We know in NSS we try to promote his values, but in the larger society, his values are not there. We must we must not forget that. Mahatma Gandhi is not only the father of the nation, he was a saint, he was a sage, and he was also a very, very practical, a practical person. A person who, whose pragmatism just shows in the different type of writings that he has left behind, in his different dreams. Today we know, you know, we have seen very painful uh, images of people migrant workers walking at night, day, you know, huge, huge distance, thousands of kilometers to their homes. Many of them are youths. Many of them were, you know, it, it brings tears to your eyes to see the suffering of these people. Now they are going back to the villages. And we are now saying that these villages have to be, uh, in a way, Atmanirbhar, you have to make them Atmanirbhar maybe. I, I'll, not, I'll not take uh, too much of time, I'll just uh, wind up maybe after you know, five, ten minutes. Let me just share with you what Mahatma Gandhi's model village was like. Now you listen carefully to what I'm going to say about his idea of a model village. And you try to imagine that if this model village would have been a the suffering of the people, suffering of the villagers, perhaps would not have been there. Perhaps the very issue of migrant workers would not have been there. Because he talked about a village which was self-sufficient, which was self-sufficient which had, which produced its own grains, its own vegetables and fruit and its own khadi. He talked of a village with 
very clean atmosphere with no dust in it, with a prayer hall for everyone, equality, a prayer hall for everyone, with wells where people will come, irrespective of caste to collect water. So it was a very dream type of situation, dream type of, you know, uh, see, uh, you know, village that he was having. And to add to it, he was talking of a village whose houses should be built with material found within a radius of five miles around it. He was not talking of going to the ends of the earth to collect material to build huge houses. Very, very sustainable, maybe. To today, it seems uh, it is a very, uh, very too, too idealistic. Which is modern. So it's utopia, self-reliance, clean and hygienic environment, collective management of the gifts of nature, which we have not done so much during the COVID situation. So my message to the youth in part of this webinar and also my colleagues who are there to think about this to think about how to resume because the pandemic situation is caused by the virus no doubt the response that we are giving this response that we are giving by and we cannot forget is has enough for everybody's need but not enough for everybody's need so i think gandhi can be a very very good role model he can be a very very good uh, you can say uh, icon is an icon for us is somebody which our youth should take more seriously. And uh, I, I personally, personally, Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Hello. Hello, sir. Please do. And uh, please do unmute. Unmute. Please do unmute. Please unmute. Sir. Yes, yes. Uh, are Hello, you sir. Yes. Okay, okay, sir. Okay, now okay. <laughs> Am I taking too much of time? No, okay, sir. Hmm? Okay. Acha, how, how long have you not been listening to me? Okay, sir. Now continue. Okay. I am with Gandhi. Have you heard about Gandhi? Okay. Anyway. So, uh, so Gandhi is a... No, but Vivekananda also said, yes, is it okay? Now, okay, now? Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry because of this situation. Uh, so long as millions live in hunger, 
and ignorance. So long as millions live in hunger and ignorance, I hold every person a traitor who, having been educated at their expense, plays, pays not the least heed to them. So I think Vivekananda is a person is a says who again has been very, very practical. Again, he has been uh, very, uh, so to say, uh, encouraging in a way, a source of, source of inspiration in many ways. And I, I personally, I like uh, his very important uh, message, uh, or you can say saying, where he, where he wrote, it's a quotation, it's a part of Vivekananda's book, Lectures from Colombo to um, Almora, where he says, you will be nearer to heaven through football than for the study of the Gita. You will be nearer to you will be nearer to uh, heaven through football than for the study of Gita. So what did he try to say? He actually tries to remind us that mere accumulation of knowledge, however sacred, isn't enough to enhance our life. He points out that the footballer, footballer can be also a, uh, is, is more in yoga than one who is mugging up the gate verse by verse, who is just mugging up, who is not understanding it. So these are things which we need to you know, understand because Vivekananda, is a personality who is very popular amongst the youth and particularly amongst the section of the youth who I think is taking Vivekananda in a different way, in a way that he should not be taken into. He cannot be you know, and cast upon by only a part of the youth. He is, he belongs to entire humanity. And there are many, many persons who say that, you know, I am a karma yogi. And do you know what karma yoga means? Karma yoga, you know, actions must, uh, it must stem from inclusiveness. If one is not inclusive, one is a karma yogi. You can be a karma yogi only by being inclusive, inclusive. Let me sum it up as soon as possible. <laughs> but but I really wanted to uh, tell the youths, especially the ones who are actually uh, listening, or maybe uh, even our own uh, program officers and you know our our fraternity, our fraternity of you know NSS uh, officers and volunteers. That along with Mahatma Gandhi and Vivekananda, I think. Uh, just one more person who is very, very important for us. Because you see, all the time, we look for icons. I meet students who actually uh, feel very frustrated and who, uh, you know, try to say, sir, who, whom can we follow? There are people whom we can follow. Mahatma Gandhi is one. Vivekananda is one. And APG Kalam can be another. Because he's a person who was very near to the youths of our country. He's a person who was near to, in fact, to, and maybe to all of us. He is a person who said, dream, dream, dream. Dreams transform into thoughts and thoughts result in action. He is a person who said, it is very easy to defeat someone, but it is very hard to win someone. You can defeat someone very easy, but it's very difficult to win somebody. He is somebody who says that my message, especially to young people, is to have courage to think differently. 
In van to travel down export paths, courage to discover the impossible and conquer the problem and succeed. He was in who said, a dream is not that which you think that does not let you sleep. Does not let you see. This is important. This is one person who we can ingrain to our NSS activities, NSS program. Vivekananda, Mahatma Gandhi, Nehru. Regarding the, he is one person who we had, you know, great plans for our country. And I try to mention about the program called the uh, so the Puda program was actually a dream of Abdul Kalam it could have been uh, you know a nation building uh, you know effort for us so uh, let us Think of a future, let us dream of a future which uh, can, in a way, uh, bring us out of the COVID situation. Finally, I'll just take two, three minutes to just tell what we can do in the COVID situation because this, this very important uh, uh, webinar is on the COVID situation. It is on the backdrop of the COVID situation that we are having this webinar. And the topic itself says that what the youth should do during the COVID situation and after the COVID situation. But we cannot, of course, in Assam, living in Assam, we cannot actually also forget the flood situation. We also cannot forget the other infections that we have already. Encephalitis has killed as many people as we have. We shouldn't forget that. So, people about COVID and Christmas. Remember, you know, Florida yesterday is. And you know that they did. They were having a big program against masks. People were coming out without masks. And on the day just after that, they ended up with 15 pounds a single day. And their, you know, entire, entire, I should say, medical situation in Florida has gone. In a way, in topsy turvy, topsy turvy. Then, secondly, our volunteers they need to help people in distress, which they do. All our youth should do. And as volunteers, in fact, they have the motto: "Not be me, but you." Not me, but you. This is something very, very uh, significant. Not many, too many, uh, you know, schemes in the world have this "not me, but you" motto. Then I should. I must say, we must help in rebuilding the villages and the economy. The youths have a big role to play regarding that. Youths must get involved in agriculture. And they must use the education, the qualification that they have in building up networks for greater productivity and access to the markets. They must use their education for those ends because globalization, Market forces are a reality. We cannot actually ignore them. We ignore them at our own peril. At least till the point that they are there, we have to try to build up networks to connect. Just like uh, we, there were a lot of talks about entrepreneurship in the earlier presentation. So this entrepreneurship must be something which we would take up. And then, fourthly, very importantly, I would say the youths of the country must be politically conscious. 
and they must do politics they must do politics to build up a sustainable future not doing politics i say is bad politics einstein say einstein say again he was he say if i were to remain silent i would be guilty of complicity so silence is not good only we have to be you know conscious we have to actually do whatever is necessary to bring in good politics because man is not only a social animal he is also a political animal and we have to understand i am not using the i am not using the term, this very you know the power politics that goes on because that is the only ideology it seems that fuels our political parties now there is no ideology there is there is no uh, principle no only only clinging on to power so i am not talking about that i am talking about positive good politics so i am talking about power the youths have to know how to deal with power how to talk to power how to you know keep power how to keep power at a safe distance at a, you know within 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 in you can, you can say uh, a limit not to uh, you know get it to a situation where things become very bad einstein again said that the world is a dangerous place not because of those because of those who look on and do nothing we have to remember that you have to remember that i think we all have to remember that this very important saying of einstein you know that the world is a dangerous place it is you know covid is made more dangerous but not because of those who do the evil but because of those who look on and do nothing so my point is you take to swami vivekananda's words arise awake and stop not till the goal is reached that is important we have to be like that we have to be you know enthused by the words of that then finally we have to understand that the state is withdrawing from all all you know from the from the entire you can say uh, welfare economy from the welfare it is no longer a welfare state it is withdrawing and what is being uh, asked for is that what is asked for what is asked for is active citizens so we have to be active citizens the neo liberal state says they are withdrawing and they are emphasizing on our duty on the duty of the citizens we cannot remain idle so if something is happening we have to do something this is now the present emphasis of the present regime of the present government so we have to keep all this in mind and uh, let me also inform you that the oxfam report oxfam is a organization and also if you combine it with the un you know world food report world food organization report they are talking of a very uh, troubling future for us they have you know if the report came out a few days back it is saying that the that by the end of this uh, year will be around 12000 deaths hunger deaths every day in the world and according to them already in india the number of covid deaths have been surpassed they have been actually surpassed to a large extent by hunger deaths staring at us at the people at the common people the youth the educationist the leader we all have to get our acts together to build up a new future for us we have to again dream of a utopia you have to dream about a utopia though the dystopian future the dystopian world the dystopian you know the different type of novels which are written about dystopia they seem to be more real today 
I'm not going into the details. That's a very interesting, you know, issue. You know, dystopia, which even you know, there are these are this is a genre of novels actually, which came up uh, to talk of a future which is not, which should not be. Utopia is a future which should be. Dystopia is a future which shouldn't be. So these novels they talk of different different type of futures and some of the future like authoritarianism, surveillance, you know, mass violence, the role of the mass media in, in, a, in a way dragging the people. It's a, you know, the brave new world which of Elder Sachs Huxley, maybe this future, our future, which we will not want, but it seems they are becoming a reality. And if we don't want this dystopian future, and if we want a utopian future, we all have to take our you know, we have to act together and youths will have to play a role. So I am I am trying to say that the youths have their role to play not only in nation building, they have to in building up a future for humanity as a whole. With these words, I would like to once again thank the entire Juan Coles family in this opportunity. This is actually I have visited at college several times. This is a this is a great, great opportunity for me again to uh, communicate with them and be a part of one of their programs. Thank you very much. Okay. Hello. Hello. Thank you very much, sir. Is it okay? Okay, okay, I'm sir. Sorry okay. for the technical problem. I'm very uh, sorry. And no problem, <laughs> sir. The, the, this is the problem of the network. So thank you very much, sir, for your well deliberation. The space is uh, really informative and thought provoking, also, I think. <laughs> so I'm very much grateful to you. Uh, now I request participants, friends. Uh, participants and friends may ask questions directly. We have three questions in chat box. Hello, sir. Yes, yes. Hello, sir. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Uh, we have three questions in chat box. Uh, may I read the question? Yes, you may read. Okay. Okay. The first question is, uh, sir, as we know, in this pandemic time, there are lack of PPC kit for doctors. Then it is. Uh, right for social workers that will go to their field without PPC kit. Atul Kumar Mishra. Question put by Atul Kumar Mishra. Yes, sir. Yes, yes, yes please. Hello. Yeah, can I answer or you put the, all, all the questions together? Okay. Uh, next question. May I go next question now? Oh, it is up to you. I can also answer uh, it now. Yes, yes, okay, okay. Then the second question is, uh, what is the main role of youth after COVID-19? Uh, the question put by Mini, Mini Nath. Mini Nath. Uh, question third, how can we organize the unorganized labor force? The question put by Padma So th these three questions are in our chat, chat box. So, so, Excuse so, me, sir. Yes. Yes. Hello, sir. For Dr. Cardong answering or I am answering the questions? I think, I uh, think uh, question number three. The first, question uh, first, first question. Yes. First question for uh, Dr. Cardong, sir. Which one? A, a, or, a labor organization or what? Yeah, labor organization. Uh, no, no, that is third one. That okay. is third okay. one. Okay, on. thank you. Thank you for pertinent question. Actually, uh, organizing an organized labor sector is very important at this point of time. Uh, now, what we can do, uh, we have already seen that uh, the government, state government, res respective state government are also doing necessary steps, taking necessary steps to uh, register the uh, labor, laborers who have come from other states and uh, those informations 
will be utilized for giving employment to do those uh, uh, unorganized labor laborers laborers and as of now as per information uh, some other voluntary organize organizations also yes. voluntary organizations also they yes. are doing necessary workout to organize these uh, unorganized labor sectors this uh, these are uh, some information even our nss volunteer can also take up some small small uh, projects to uh, uh, get into their uh, problems issues how those labors can be engaged again in our own sector because there is a notion bazar aru uh, both the market and uh, then field agriculture field must be occupied by own people in our state otherwise we, our problem will not be solved i do not know whether it is uh, 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 people are satisfied to my answer or not okay sir okay okay next uh, next question i think uh, it will uh, answered by hello? by rajiv pandit sir Uh, the, the, there were three questions. Uh, I think yes. this was the last one. Yes. The last one answer. Yes, yes, this is the last one. This is the yeah, last one. This is a very, it's a very, very important answer that he gave. And uh, from Potthar, Potthar Pra Bazar, this is very, very important. It you have to understand. And there are organizations uh, which are working on that, and uh, we have to actually that there is no other way out. Uh, there, I think uh, I, I actually uh, just missed. Uh, Can you can you repeat the question about you know the other questions which were there? Yes. Can you call? Ah yes yes sir yes. Yes just just uh, read out. Ah. Uh, first question is sir as we know in this pandemic time there are lack of PPE kit. Oh yeah yeah yeah. Now I get it. Now I get it. Right. Yes. Okay okay. Yeah. So 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 regarding this you know uh, NSS volunteers or any volunteer so whatsoever. they cannot and they should not work uh, or give their services without adequate protection even in my presentation i have told that you just can do the sensitization work you can do the sensitization work why mask is important why we should uh, not do this and that we can popularize what the who are is saying and the government is saying these are very important because uh, there are places even even now in the country where the mass media is not actually uh, present there are there are art places only our youths only our educated ones they are maybe having the information and this information the importance of wearing mask and things so sensitization should be done you know beyond that point you cannot be a doctor you cannot risk your life and if your life doesn't remain what will you do? so you must not yes. you know venture out without you know pp kids if you if at all at one point of time it may happen you may be pressed into service but even then without pp kit you must not venture out you, you must not risk your life that is that is not something which is advisable at all okay 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 sir okay sir, Excuse me, sir. Uh, yes And sir uh, it's more be... one question yes sir yes, sir it's yes. me nihar so can i speak now yes. hello yes yeah, yes sir it's me nihar anjan chakravarti from guwahati pibm college yes. uh, sir i i want to ask question on like uh, as this in pandemic we have seen that uh, all the exam schedule has been changed so sir uh, for the last semester students i have a question sir if someone is getting a back in fourth semester then he should according to the guidelines of gu then he should he would be able to give that exam in the sixth semester but sir if the exam is cancelled of fourth second according to ugc guidelines then sir what will uh, be the impact of the student uh, of the fourth semester who is having a back in the fourth semester and also giving the exam in the sixth semester uh 
I think uh, okay, this is a question which is yes. which can be answered only by the controller of examinations. Oh, okay. <laughs> because, yeah, yes, sir. Okay. <laughs> because because what has happened is UGC guideline has come, but how it yeah. will be implemented by the universities, it will be yes, it will depend on the universities and also upon to some extent on the government. Let them come up okay. with the guideline and then we'll understand. So is that okay, Nia? That is the answer. Oh, okay, thank you, sir. So there, there is, I think there is one more question. Yes. There is, there was... yes. Hello. Yes. Uh, what is the main role of your after yes, COVID-19? Yes. That question, direct question that is. What is the main role of your <laughs> after COVID-19? Yeah. The main uh, role uh, of yes. your... Uh, the role of youth after COVID-19. It is there in the topic. Yes. <laughs> you see, the main role of youth before COVID-19 should have been nation building. Yes. During this period of COVID is nation building, or you can say, yes. uh, you know, doing something for the nation. <laughs> and after, you know, COVID-19, we still, you know, nation building. I mean to say, I'm not belittling it. Please don't take it like that. I mean to say, firstly, you cannot have a one sentence answer. The point is, we have to move forward and we have to work on the present to build up a very nice and support. Actually, so in addition to, to keep on working. Yeah, yeah, yes, pardon, Ed. May I, may I add one point? Yes, may I, I add open. one point, sir? Yes, yes. Actually, I would like to tell uh, Mr. B Nihar that. Uh, uh, he is also uh, one student which, uh, uh, whom I am uh, targeting for. Please don't be panic about your academic programs. Yes. Please don't be panic because uh, at one point of time we also lost one year and the government is there to look after your problem, your issues. Let the pandemic situation be over. Let us live and overcome the problem. And as regards the rule of youth in post-pandemic period, I'd like to add that uh, already our uh, handics are have already covered everything. But I just would like to add that we should be very much focused on the opportunities mm -hmm. to come ahead. We should be able to transform the challenges to opportunities. That is the need of the hour. That will be our uh, weapons to conquer the world. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, sir. Okay, thank you, sir. Now, as for our agenda, now I request uh, my another my colleague, Mr. Biju Setia, Assistant Professor of the Department of English Kwang College, to offer a vote of thanks on behalf of NSNH, on behalf of Kwang College family. Uh, I request Biju Setia, Assistant Professor of the Department of English, to offer vote of thanks. Please go. It's my privilege to have been asked to go to who have who have directly and indirectly contributed to the webinar. Rule of youth in nation building process during and after COVID-19, organized by the NSSL of Kwang College. So at the very outset, I would like to extend a hearty Thanks to the honorable delegates of today's webinar. The key is Professor David Kardong, sir, head of the Department of Life Sciences and coordinator of NSSL University, and above all, who is a man of action, and the resource person, Professor Rajiv Hendik, a dynamic professor in the Department of History of Gohati University, for blessing us with their gracious presence in the program and took out their valuable time in spite of their busy schedule. We are really enlightened in your deliberation, sir. So a very, very big thanks goes to both of you, sir. 
then I would like to extend my hearty thanks to the Honorable Principal of Kuang College, Dr. Dibyananda Setia sir, for his enthusiastic support in organizing this webinar, and more especially for delivering the inaugural speech of today's webinar, in which he refers the yacht as the building blocks of a nation and mentions about the significant role they should perform during and after the pandemic situation. Thank you very much, sir, for your encouraging words. A very special thanks to the participants hailing from different parts of the globe for their active participation. We are really pleased with you for your overwhelming support to our webinar. We must be thankful to the technical expert of today's webinar, Dr. Sosidananda Saikya, who is also an active faculty member of Kuang College. Thank you very much for your unflinching support and coordination. Once again, on behalf of the NSS cell of Kuang College in particular, and the fraternity of Kuang College in general, and on my own behalf, I extend a very sincere, hearty vote of thanks to each and everybody present in this webinar for being instrumental in making the webinar a success. So with these warm words, we move to the end of today's webinar. Thank you very much. Thank you. And have a wonderful evening. Thank you again.